when I was 17, I, it was the first time I ever saw a powered paraglider. I was living in California at the time, and I was taking flight lessons at uh, Gillespie Field. Uh, flying Cessnas, which was really cool, but the idea of being in an enclosed box in 110 degree summer heat over the desert during flight training wasn't really for me. I, I saw paragliding one day and I just knew that, that was the style of flying that I wanted to do. Flying like a bird, the freedom that it gives you of just having no obstructions below you. You can just look around, there's nothing there, you're just in a simple chair and uh, the view is amazing. You can literally go anywhere, throw the motor out of the trunk, set it up in 10 minutes, and be in the air seeing things from a perspective that nobody else can see. Wind in your face, flying two feet off the ground, and it, it, it was unexplainable how much better it was than any other form of aviation that I had experienced at that point. All the places we have been flying on this trip were sort of unique, especially for me coming from Europe, where uh, well, everything around me is uh, green, mostly populated, quite densely populated. So here the huge areas you can fly and not meet and not see any traces of civilization is just amazing. The craziest spot we've flown so far is Monument Valley, which is, I've been a few times, but every time I show up there, it's still just as majestic as it has been in the past. Once you get into the air, you're just, you feel so small, you're among giants, basically. You're, you pull up next to a monument that's a thousand feet off the ground, and it just, it just amazes me, you know? You, you just feel so small, and you can climb up to the top and just fly right over, and just the whole world opens up below you. It's a crazy experience. Ever since the first time I flew with Jeff in uh, Monument Valley about three years ago, I knew that he w his style was exactly like mine. We're always kind of uh, upping the bar for each other. Whenever we fly together, I always know he's right there if I want to do some maneuver or I'm getting bored. I'm just like, yeah, oh, let's go interact with Jeff. And there, he's the wingman, he's right there. You know what I mean? So uh, I've never used that term because it's such a cliche, unless I was quoting Top Gun. But you know, when I was in the army, all the Apache guys were like, mm, wingman. And it's like, come on, you fly helicopters. but. Jeff is uh, Jeff is my wingman. Javi, who came over from Spain, he's one of the top acrobatic pilots in the in the world. He's like kind of a wing nut and like wears really bright clothing, you know. But he is such an incredible pilot to watch. To see that really inspires me to push myself, you know, to maybe get somewhere close to that level, but maybe not with the bright clothing. Always my dream: no fly America, fly USA. But I, yes, crazy sometimes, but good crazy. Mm.
we've been on the road now for a week just uh driving anytime we see something on the side of the road it's like hey let's go sesh that out and go fly it, it ends up being the no most amazing flight ever you know we've had several that were just little little surprises you'd never know we're over that you know mountain range The coolest place we've flown by far uh, on this trip was the Bonneville Salt Flats. Uh, we happen to catch it at a lucky time. It's usually only like this in the spring, but where it just dries up and there's that salt layer on the top and it just looks like crystals and when the sun shines on it, it's just shiny white. And just to get above that, we were able to fly all morning for six hours, you know, to get high above it, fly low, very little contrast, and it just feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere, which you are. So Shane and I have been working together for three years now uh, in a previous business and then we started Fly Halo with Byron. Um, the main reason we started it was the fact that when we're together in a non-weird way, let's just be clear about this real quick. We're talking about flying here when I'm, when I'm discussing this. We, we lock into each other. We know exactly what the other person's thinking in the air. Uh, it's kind of like an extension of your body. <laughs> Uh, so Shane and I can just roll into a, a mirrored spiral and uh, feel completely confident in the other person's abilities. I'm spinning right around him and you can see his face. He's grinning ear to ear. I'm super excited. Uh, it's just it's just like a best friend bonding, you know. It's, it's kind of weird, but it's what we got. My favorite part about this entire trip is just the people that you meet and the bonds that you make. I mean, just hanging with the guys and after a decade of being in the sport, yeah, the flying's great, but it absolutely is the relationships that I've found.
friends and colleagues say he was one of the best. Now they are remembering the local paragliding expert who died in an accident Tuesday in Chesapeake. Jeff Toll made a lot of friends through his love of power paragliding. Friends that flew in from across the country when they heard the 26-year-old had died on Tuesday. The accident happened while Toll was flying, like he always does on this farm in Chesapeake off Beaver Dam Road. State police are still investigating the accident. Friends say their focus is on the Toll family, his high school sweetheart, his wife Jessica. While Toll is gone, his friends say they'll keep flying, although it will be hard without him. When someone passes, it's you kind of maybe ask yourself why, or you know, Jeff was such an incredible person. You know, why did he have to go in such a tragic way? And I don't really buy into the, I really don't buy into the whole fact of, of he was taken for a reason or it was his time or, but I do believe that you can find reason and meaning in in passing. came back out to some of his favorite places and to some of the places that he and I and Ryan had, and Byron had discussed flying in the, in the future with him. Just to kind of come back and do it right or finish the, the trip in, in his honor. Yeah, there was a long period and it's still in a way ongoing um, after Jeff's passing that I was, for one, uh, terrified to fly. Um, and then there was not wanting to just because you know, he couldn't, and it felt like we, we shouldn't be indulging. You know, we've had to deal with, um, I think, a lot of weather on this trip. And it's interesting how uh, we've been able to fly every day, almost like Jeff has, you know, been watching over us on this trip. This is something I think we all need, something I need. So for that, I'm thankful that if it is him that uh, that he pulled through. <laughs> so one of my favorite parts of this trip was Monument Valley. It's one of my favorite places to fly and it's one of Jeff's favorite places to fly. And we took off and we were just getting rocked. I mean, just knocked around. Uh, knocked around so much to the point where we just were turning around, head back to the airstrip because it, it just wasn't enjoyable. As soon as we turned around, we saw some clouds forming right above Eagle Mesa and they were tiny and we were just gonna go drag our feet through these tiny, almost non-existent clouds and then they started building and building and building and it was beautiful. It was definitely one of my favorite flights ever. The whole energy of the trip, the, the whole goal was just to have fun. So, you know, we've been tearing around BLM land, you know, totally primitive and sitting there looking at the Milky Way at night, having campfires and camping in these places that are so dark. You have no idea how many stars are out there. Early morning going fly in these awesome locations and then uh, driving all day. Uh, one thing we haven't done a lot of is sleep, but it's okay never know what the uh, adventure is going to hold. Little trips like this are little experiences, um, but this trip definitely, I think, did some major healing when it came to that connection to flight again and the passion to flight. And it's just been nothing but a good time the entire time. And the group of guys that we've had there this week is just fun to joke with, talk with, fly with. So, yeah, I think it, um, 
Not I think, I know. It sparked that, that fire again. Being up there is my zen, you know, it's if I'm having a bad day or just life isn't making sense or just, I don't know, it's, it's clarity is what it is for me. Redefining moment every, every time. Even the non-flying parts have just been awesome, you know, we're just two vehicles, a group of dudes and some dogs just completely dusty. We smell like onions. It's <laughs> just, you know, when we come home from these trips, we have like, 35 new inside jokes that we quote all day that our you know girlfriends and wives are just irritated about roll their eyes like oh great they went on another road trip you know The reason we, we chose to do this route for this trip is kind of uh, sentimental to us now. It's been nine months tomorrow since Jeff passed away. Um, it's been a long, long journey to try and, and enjoy flying again, but this trips like these really help, you know. I'm well on my way to being back to, you know, enjoying it like I, like I did before. Hanging out with the guys, you know, we all share a common experience or love for flying. No matter where you're from, you know, you just, you love it. So it's just cool, even though we have all of these differences in our cultures, we can instantly bond and become great friends. And when we're on the road, it's just, it's just nonstop giggles and fun. Flock of Just a flock of birds It's how you think of love And I always Look up to the sky Pray before the dawn Cause they fly always Sometimes they arrive Sometimes they are gone Fly on Flock of To smoke on turns and rise, following them up. Still, I always look up to the sky, pray before the dawn, cause they fly. To fly on. 
maybe one day I'll fly next to you Fly on Right through Maybe one day I can't fly with you Fly on Fly Love